Welcome back, guys. So we're on to another episode of where I critique your designs. Now I have to say I've been looking forward to this. They've been a lot of fun, and especially fun getting to check out all the designs that have been coming in from all parts of the world. A lot of different ways of designing. So let's get into it. First design that I'll be critiquing is Jack, Jack Perry. Jack's 15 years old. Stay here, Snowden, sit down, sit down. Watch your feet. Go in, the, go in there. Monte, get out of the picture. Don't you speak English? Go. So let's get into it. First one up here today is uh, a design from Jack Perry. Jack's 15. To only be 15 and to have achieved what he's achieved here is pretty, pretty uh, impressive to say the least. Jack wants his car to have the essence, the feeling of an Aston Martin. And he's given it a feel that is about halfway Aston Martin, halfway his own. Very interesting. At this stage of the career, it's almost uh, useless. Doesn't, doesn't mean that it's not necessary, but it almost makes more sense, not almost, it makes more sense to be sketching rather than 3D modeling. And I know I've said this, I want to see your designs, but please, if you're young, don't run before you can walk. So what I mean by that is try to sketch as much as you can until you get your designs to a point where you can be really, really proud of every single detail on that car. When you're learning to design, it's more about creating the shape by hand and feeling the shape rather than a machine telling you how to design the car. And for example, when you're working on the front of your car here and you have a front engine, you're gonna to need to feed the engine, obviously, like we always talk about. I would just say that the character of the opening of the front of the car is very important because that distinguishes almost the face of the vehicle, the identity of the vehicle, the identity of the brand, how you communicate that. So don't just make an opening that goes from one end or one side to the other side. That becomes almost too generic, too brutal even. Even if you're, I mean, you're speaking about an Aston Martin, there's elegance in the design of an Aston Martin, there's control. So your front end design, not to be too harsh, is a bit like an open mouth gaping fish needing oxygen and uh, not only one intake but two intakes because you got one in the middle of of another intake so that's a bit over the top these headlamps here you should be actually designing a car for 10 years from now um, and these headlights here probably are about 30 years old 20 30 years old in the way you've designed them so every element like i said in design is important come up with a headlight design that is unique represents the brand that you're you're obviously uh, designing for uh, and most 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 important looks beautiful gives the car a lot of feeling the the shape is beautiful you've got these really nice curves going over over the front fender and down into the bonnet or the hood area and you got your power dome area going on through there that's nice you get a feeling of uh, of, of power it shows it now, the one issue you really want to be careful with, and I've always hated it, are fat A-pillars. Fat A-pillars have no reason to be uh, in the future, but the future means advancement. Advancement means innovation. Innovation means bringing in new technology, and we want to run the A-pillars as thin as we can. So look at expanding the windscreen area, which is a good thing, as wide as you can, and thinning up those A-pillars such that you have very thin A-pillars, they block your vision a lot less. You've got something very interesting going on the roof here, this double bubble, and I see that. Obviously, you know the connection with Zagato, who are very closely tied with Aston Martin, special editions, and they bring in their double bubble. You get down onto the side, you've got a bit of shoulder, which is a good thing. You've got a character line going through here, which is very nice. And then all hell breaks loose with the side section here. It's almost like getting fat, getting narrow, getting fat, getting narrow. Now I could count a lot of lines, a lot of cores, a lot of radiuses in this area that are probably gonna drive me silly, literally drive my head silly if I looked at it in real life. So I would calm that down a little bit. You got a lot of rock and roll going on through that area, through there, it's too much. Uh, wheels, too conventional. So I would always try to look to do a wheel that has an odd number of spokes instead of an even number of spokes, simply because odd number a spokes give you that sort of tendency of a wheel to look like it's moving. So Jack, uh, in conclusion, again, you've done a great job on this. I'm really surprised that at 15, you've been able to 3D model a car. 
So great job. And so in, all in all, I think this is a great point for you to be at in your life at 15 years old. Take in the pointers that we're giving you. And I think you'll be able to advance this sketch, this design to something even almost roadworthy or road legal. And remember to add those elements that make it futuristic or at least hard for the engineer to figure out how to make. And then you'll be 10 years into the future with it. So let's get on to the next one. The next one is from Gianfranco Delboy. John is from Lima, Peru. So, uh, uh, John has hecho un muy buen trabajo aquí por tener 13 años. Gianfranco has done an amazing job for his age. Uh, I'm not trying to gush, but this is one of the better ones that I've seen. First of all, what grabbed me on your sketch here, which is very impressive, is that you've decided to do a front view and not the let's call it typical side view. So I can feel the Ferrari P3, P4 front feeling that you've given to this sketch here. Uh, there's a lot of roundness to it. One very difficult part to do, if you're not tracing, is to make the design, when you're looking at it from straight on, symmetrical. You'll have typically your center line, I see you've put it on here, but again, a center line is what kind of establishes what's on the left and what's on the right. So you've done a pretty good job. What you have to remember, Jean, is that when you're designing a car, the people inside are critical in the terms of what we call packaging and ergonomics. You want the people in the car, in the car to feel comfortable. They don't want to feel like they're claustrophobic. You've got a very low cow line, which is great. Cow line is where the back of the hood meets the windscreen. So that line there, Typically, the lower you get it, the better it is for vision. And of course, the further forward it comes on the car, the lower it's gonna look like in this view here. So maybe you're, you're onto something here with pulling it that far forward and able to drop it that much. Now, one mistake you've made here that jumps out, John, is the, the, the wheels. There's regulations that you don't wanna go uh, further out than the body itself. We need to cover the entire wheel up to a certain degree. So if you have a front wheel, and a rear wheel, and you have to get in here. The coverage is a 30, 50 degree angle that we call it. So you have to make sure that when a th within 30 and 50 degrees off the vertical, that you're covering the wheel. But remember that you need to keep, say the top half of the wheel, top quarter of the wheel approximately covered. After that, you can start to go in. Otherwise you have what's called overbody, undertired car. And that looks a little bit ungainly, kind of like the car's gonna tip over one way or the other. So bring those tires out when you're sketching them. It'll make the car look a lot more aggressive, a lot more planted. You've gotten very fancy with these headlights here. It's almost kind of like makeup. You've got something that starts here, curves and goes up like that. In the early stages, simplify the, uh, the overall shape of the headlight and go to town on the inside of the headlight. Go to town means uh, put a lot more effort into the, uh, the interior of the headlamp. So work on you know, new lighting systems are now, we're going towards organic LEDs. But when you get too fancy with it, you're trying too hard, uh, it kind of goes in, a, in the wrong direction. So, and then one more thing here, I would say, you got your Ferrari-esque logo in the front, very small slit air intake, which is good. Just make sure that when you add intakes to a car, that they bring a little bit of character to the car too, much like the headlights contribute character. You can also work on the air intake. So good job for a 13. Very, very good. You're probably a future car designer in the making right now. Let me know in 10, 15 years where you're at. And if you're a car designer, we'll go out for a whiskey or a cigar. Good job. So moving on to the final one today. We're looking at the work of Bartos Gradzik. Gradzik and Bartos is 19 years old. He's from Poland and he's studying in the city of dreams of automotive dreams, automotive history and design, uh, Turin, Italy. Lucky him. And the piece that I'm gonna look at uh, of your work, Bartos, is a Ferrari that you've done since you've been in the university. So we're taking it up a few notches over what uh, a pure beginner is. So onto the design Bartos. And what I wanna first do is tell you if I feel this car is a Ferrari, which I do. I mean, first impact is it's a Ferrari. I mean, all of you who are looking at this who are beginners are probably saying this is a fantastic sketch. I hope one day I can render like this, but it's not about the rendering. It's about the ideas that you're actually showing on paper. 
but the stage you have to be under when you start this this stage of rendering is where you dominate you you control uh, the shape the design itself so it's not in design it's not so much about how cool the design looks uh, in a rendered phase it's about how cool it looks in the most barest of, of, of forms of rendering forms so what you need to do is remember that a design is a moving object of a car and you have to get that feeling of movement in the design well if I drew this car from the side view you'd probably be asking me why it's going uphill while it's parked it's got all the weight on the rear end the car looks like it's raised up in the front and it's ready to take off which is not a good look for a car cars should typically either look very planted on the road or ready to jump ready to move forward this car kind of looks like it's sitting down a little bit in the base so in the front let's start with the front first of all i can see how you try to get that ferrariness into the front you got sort of a longish bonnet longish hood by the way you've rendered it, maybe that's the reason why it looks static, is until you get to that stage where you can actually control reflections, control surfaces by rendering them and giving them that 3D sort of uh, contoured look, you're gonna come out with very flat surfaces. So your bonnet, your hood is very flat through here. I know you've tried, I can see the slight uh, nuances of shading to try to get it to do something different. Ferraris aren't like that. Ferraris have sharp, to soft they're not constantly sharp lines that just start and keep going and keep going and keep going and then suddenly stop there's a movement to the core to where the metal bends that is constantly changing especially on Ferraris where you get sort of a soft core develops into a tighter core edge and then starts to release itself unspring itself almost to relax itself and become soft again yours is almost razor sharp which can be razor sharp but I just wouldn't let it stay razor sharp. It has to either uh, become even sharper, which is impossible maybe, or become softer. So try to get some feeling into the cores such that that edge, that sharp edge that you have here on the front, you have interesting headlights. In this day and age, when we're doing headlights, we have to find unique character. And just putting the straight line through there as a headlight doesn't cut it it doesn't give you enough character to say that this car is a ferrari if i was seeing that car down the road coming at me and i saw those headlights i wouldn't i wouldn't know it was a ferrari until it was on top of me the front end i can understand it you've got a lot going on very blady so in one sense that's okay because it kind of matches the uh the volume of the rest of the car the surface is at a very hard edge but again it's almost like i would never come close to this car with without gloves on because i would be kind of afraid of touching any of the surfaces for, for the sharpness that you've introduced here. They're a bit, bit, very harsh, very pointy, very aggressive, maybe way too aggressive. So Bartos, as we move down the side of the car, uh, next area we can talk about is the actual side section of the vehicle. Now remember, Ferraris are muscular cars. They're sensual and muscular, kind of like a muscular mama, if you want to say it. They're still sensual though. So what you want to remember is that on a Ferrari, uh, typically we try to put in what's called a shoulder into the design so the shoulder will come right around where the belt line is on the car that's where the glass and the body come together we can also call it the waistline body line belt line um, so yeah remember that you want to put in a little bit of a shoulder in that area so you get a highlight running through that core that bend of the metal all the way through the car that typically looks really good it can stop and pick up again but you don't just want it to be flat right through there because it kind of looks like you know no shoulders that kind of is not very manly or very feminine either you want some kind of outward movement just below this area here so that kind of makes the car look a little bit more sporty to say the least so in conclusion Bartos uh, try to pick up on these uh, tips I know you're a designer in university now so you should have a little bit of thicker skin than anybody else just starting you should take it and uh, sorry if it sounds a little bit harsh, not personal, obviously. Uh, but if you pick up on these points, I think your improvement on the design will be enormous. It will really start to bring that car out and make it possibly even a car that we'll, we'll see on the roads in the future. So thank you to all who have submitted your designs. I really appreciate that. I hope that the words of advice that I've given you here are helping you. And uh, I promise you that every episode that we put out will bring some new tips, uh, to all the different levels of designers of you out there. Remember that product designs are also welcome. And of course, we're gonna keep moving forward on this and I'm just gonna get out of the rain 
and see you soon.